Okay, everybody, so here goes another one. I just, I, I really feel led to speak. I, I don't know what is going on. I, I, I really don't have a clue what is really happening to me lately, but I just feel like I need to share my life and I need to bring everything to the forefront and I need to expose myself and I need to keep saying what I'm being led to say and I don't know if any of us have been paying attention to what is going on in and throughout the world but there is a lot of things that are happening that are it, it just doesn't seem accidental to me at all I mean it's almost like It, it, it's it's almost like a revelation is happening of some kind that I, I can't explain. And I don't want to put words in my mouth or anybody's head. I don't want to do that. But I swear to goodness, it's like what I'm getting from this is in those days, I will pour out my spirit to all men. And we're either going to receive it or we're going to reject it. And I know me, I've been rejecting things for so long. I've been numbing out things for a very, very, very long time. But I, it was really bad, I would say, for about 14, 15 years. It, it has been really bad. Ever since I relapsed in 2010 on heroin, because I thought that I was good at that time, um, I had it in my mind that I was okay. I had a, a year and three months clean, and I thought God was with me, and I had, you know, I had this holy fire, and I was going to save my family, and I was going to do all this. That is not what happened. It could have happened if I would have made the choice to, to go by blind faith and say, I'm doing this. I'm going to do this for my family. I didn't do that. And a lot of my family members died of overdoses. My brother Earl died in October 16th, 2016. My uncle Tim died in 2021, I think, and my Aunt Tammy died in 2022, I believe. I, I believe. I'm not for sure, but I don't know the exact date. I should know this, but I don't. But I had a lot of tragic things happen in my family, in my own family, and it. we haven't really... Uh, some of my family comes together, but I haven't really been getting up with my family or people that I know too much at all. I've been reclusing and I've been staying away for some reason. I don't know why, but there's some reason to it. Something I just can't understand. It's for some eternal purpose, though, I believe now. And I have to believe that. I have to believe that. And see, the thing about belief is... I know I said a lot of bad things before about belief, but belief, what it means by going by faith with something, you have to just do it because it's calling you to do it. And you have to go through with it no matter how bad it feels, no matter what people will say, no matter how you're looked at, no matter how people judge you, it doesn't matter. It's, it's got to be done. For it is written and you have to do that thing, what you think you're being led to do with discernment by the Spirit. And there were so many times where I wanted to tell people things and I didn't. There's so many times where I wanted to give someone a word and I didn't. I held my tongue. And I had, I even had some of my family members call me before they died and I didn't answer my phone. And I feel guilty of these things, but I know now 
that they are they are in the hands of something other than me. See, I can't I can't put that burden on myself anymore because I know that I am not the creator. I am not God. I am not the person that did this. So and, and I don't I didn't really want to get into that, but th this is just things that I, I feel like I need to say. And I I've like I said, the drugs just numb everything out. You become a zombie. I was a zombie, even though I seemed alive. I'm not saying I was completely dead in my trespasses and in myself and all that, but a part of me was dead. A side of me was dead. And now, in these times, there's just too many things happening. There is people giving these testimonies of these near-death experiences and saying about God and saying about uh, the spirit realm and stuff. And it's just a lot of us, I, I don't want to say that a lot of us are going to reject it and a lot of us will accept it, but I just hope that we accept what we are supposed to accept. You see what I'm saying? I, I don't want to put those words in somebody's head that, oh, you will be rejected or you're going to reject it or you're going to accept it. I don't want to do that. I hope that every single one of you gets what is needed in your life. Every single person. I hope you gain the thing that you need. And what's very strange about this is right now I have a headache. Like I said before, I'm not feeling too great. But there's something in me that is overriding this this time. I have not felt like this in a very long time. It is time. I cannot get back on these drugs. I cannot do it anymore. And this is the crazy thing about this. This is the paradox going on here. Just a couple days I was messing up. Just a couple days ago I was getting high. Just a couple days ago I was shooting up in my arm. Just a couple days ago, I was nodding out. Well, I was high, but not really. I was just doing it to get off being sick. I really wasn't getting high, though. It was just chasing the monster, chasing the Leviathan back to the sea over and over. Leviathan, give me my hit so you can strike me and sting me again. Here I am, Leviathan. I'm serving you. Give me my hit, and then I'll be sick again, and I'll have to come back to your poison. And Leviathan <laughs> will sure as heck do it. The guy that I call, he always had it. There's people that are doing it. There's people in bondage right now as I speak. I know these people that are in bondage. And even though I have prayed for them, I cannot save them from their own bondage. I can't do it. I, maybe I can say something to them, but if they don't receive it and they don't make up their mind, then, then nothing is going to happen. That's what really bothers me. That bothers my soul. It torments me day and night thinking about people that are rejecting something that is calling them and they're not going to the call. They're not receiving the call. I am receiving the call, even if I have to let my pride and my ego, even if I have to come naked, even if I have to go through withdrawal, even if I have to say that I feel weak and I am powerless and I'm struggling and all this, then that's what I have to do. That's what I gotta do now. And, and, you know, I, I even said this to myself. I said, please just don't let this be some kind of feeling that I'm getting this time. Don't just let this be a feeling. I want something to come of this this time. You know, I, I, I'm looking for community, man. I'm looking for some kind of communal 
kind of thing in my life. I'm looking to share in something and work together and build together and plant together. But see, in order to do that, there are still things, there are still strongholds that I have to break down because it's very hard for my flesh. It's very hard for this, this flesh vessel to trust other flesh vessels. Because what do we do as flesh vessels? We do fleshly things. And we do horrible things to each other. And we're capable of doing things to each other because of all kinds of stuff. The seven deadly sins, jealousy, envy, anger, resentment, bitterness, all these things that can come up. And it's scary. It's freaking scary. It's scary. It's like a scary movie, if I'm being honest. But I know now I'm not thinking like that towards anybody. I'm not here to, like I said, I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to blame people. I'm not here to say, oh, this person is this way and that person's that way. And I know this person's like this. Look, I can't do that anymore. I'm just asking that we come as we are and we lay ourselves prostate on our knees and we just come as what is really going on with us. And we just come naked, if I'm being honest, just come completely naked. Because if you're not naked, you're covering up something. If I'm not naked, I'm covering up something. And this is, this is just one thing out of so many things is just the word nakedness. See, we all look at nakedness as a bad thing. But what do tribe people do? They don't wear clothes with one another. There are no peeping toms. There are no perverts. There are no rapists. There are no molesters. There's none of that because they grew up together naked. They live together naked. They get food together naked. They do everything together. It's a communal thing. It's a communal effort and living. And that is the meaning of life. That is the meaning of life to come into communion with something that even though you might not understand it, there is so many things right now people don't know what to believe today. They don't know what to believe because there is so many attacks coming at every single one of us. It's just attack after attack after attack. Oh, believe in this spiritual thing. This thing will give you purpose. This thing will fulfill your desires. This thing will get you rich. Do this and everyone will love you. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's like a toolbox of trickery and, and, and insanity and it's all over the place and nobody knows what to believe but there is that little thing inside every one of us that is calling and we know that it's there I know it's there you that is watching you know it's there don't ignore it no longer it's that voice that you know is a voice of goodness it's a voice of truth it's a voice of of serenity it's a voice of compassion and togetherness it's a voice of planting something it's a voice of clean water it's a voice of recognizing it's a voice of coming honestly to one another it's a voice of bearing witness to what we've been through and just completely putting everything out on the line that's what I feel right now. And as long as I feel this, as long as it's there. See, I don't really want to call this a feeling. I, I want to say that this is my intuition. This, this is my life because there's so many things that happened. There's just no way that this is an accident. I do not see any of this as an accident. Those of you who show compassion on animals, that's no accident. God put that in you. Those of you who show compassion to other people and you care and you want to give them a massage, you want to serve them healthy, healthy food, 
You want to help them be re rehabilitated. You want to help them to feel better about their health and their lives. That is no accident. And I don't believe anymore that all people are the same. That's bullshit. That is a total load of shit. Shit. Excuse my language, but it's bull crap. Not everybody is the same, but I know if we would all drink of the same cup, if we would all drink of the same communion and eat of the same communion, and we would have a togetherness state of mind, and we would start realizing that without brotherhood and without sisterhood and without trust and without honesty and without having a vision amongst each other, we have nothing here. Life is dead. It's meaningless. It's pointless. It doesn't mean anything. And I felt like that for so long that I was in hell. I was in hell when that was happening. I lost my mind in the process. I went insane in the process, if I'm being honest with you. I literally lost my mind. I even had a song where I was going, I lost my mind with nothing to find. Yes, I lost my mind with nothing to find. Yes, I lost my mind with nothing to find. Yes, I lost it. That's right, I lost it because I lost. I, I, I was writing these lyrics. This is how insane it got because I was just after whatever, you know, whatever I could listen to and whatever. And listen, I'm not saying I, I needed to do that. That needed to happen. See, there's something that, that we need to understand. If you are in a bad place right now, count that as glory. Count that as a blessing right now if you're in a bad place. If you feel lost, if you feel like you have nowhere to turn and there's nothing to do and you're so broke and, and you don't know what to do, what do you think is doing that? What do you honestly think is doing that? I'm going to let everyone make their minds up, but what do you think is doing that? I think it is us knowing that we cannot do anything without the Creator. It is a return to the Creator. It is a return to God. It is a return to the Source. It is the eschaton coming. It is coming. It's coming into fruition. I don't know how long it's going to be. It might not be in my lifetime. It might be in my lifetime. All of us know something and we're hiding. We need to stop hiding right now. The hiding, the backbiting, the, the trickery, the, 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 the talking about each other, the gossiping, this needs to stop right now. In the name of Jesus Christ and everything that is holy, everything that is good, it needs to stop. Because all we're doing is hurting and killing and destroying each other and ourselves. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing here. I, I really hope that we do not miss this call. This is a calling that has never ever happened before. I don't think that this has ever happened in the state of mankind. I don't. I, I think astrologers, I think atheists, I think agnostics, I think people that might hate God. I think people that are every, anything that I can say, nihilists, black pillars, people that might hate women, whatever it is. I truly think that if we receive this right now, it can change like this in a heartbeat. We, our whole entire lives can go on a different course right now. Right now if we receive it. Accept it with me. But you don't have to. I'm not forcing anybody to do that. Because that's not what I do. That's not up to me to do. That is up to the Holy Spirit to do yet again. 
And that's where I have to have faith. I got to have faith that that is what will do it, not me. Not me. See, the thing that gets me about these famous people, Kanye West, he's not giving the glory to God. Kanye West is giving the glory to Kanye West. And I was almost worshiping this man. I don't worship Kanye West. I worship God. I worship my creator. I don't worship any man or woman anymore. Anymore. And I never will again. But I have to be very careful that I am not deceived too by these people. Because listen, I love Kanye West. I love that man. I love all these people. I love Mel Gibson. I love Keanu Reeves. I love people that are speaking out against these things, against the principalities of darkness, against the wickedness, against the rulers in the high places. They're doing that. And, and, and I know that they are being called to do that. I know without a doubt they're being called to do that. But they don't have to do that. They're making a choice to do that right now. They are choosing to do that. They are choosing to accept the Creator. See, I don't have, I already was a skeptic and I asked a million questions. And those questions left me absolutely destitute, seeking some kind of answer, some kind of solution, some kind of way to explain God away. And it's us and we can do this. We got this. It was all wrong. It was all wrong. And I am repenting from all of that. Right now, this is what repentance means. I have turned from my ways. I have turned from that. I don't believe that anymore. Thank God I don't believe that anymore. And this is what I believe it means to be saved. We are saved from our own transgressions. We are saved from ourselves. We are saved from destroying ourselves. We choose to go to that hellish place. We're choosing that because we're rejecting the one who created us, the one who gave us life, the one who can give us eternal life right now. How can you reject that? I don't care what happened. I had horrible things happen to me, y'all. I had bad things where I, I hated God. I spit on God. I cursed God. I mocked God. I even murdered God in my heart. I was the worst of the worst. I was worse than a Nazi. I was worse than Adolf Hitler. I think I had more ambition and drive than him, if you want me to be honest. I thought I was more better than him at one time. That's how big my ego and my pride and my, my narcissism was. And this is the same thing that Kanye West, this is the same thing that every single superstar, they are not the superstar. Jesus Christ is the superstar of the universe. Him alone. We do not get or deserve any credit at all. Because we cannot do anything. We cannot do anything without God. Nothing. Nothing. Kanye West cannot make songs that he makes without God. Marilyn Manson cannot do what he does without God. Marilyn Monroe, you, I, your parents, your grandparents, Michael Jordan, nobody, nobody. Sister Teresa, Mother Teresa, the Pope, none of them can do anything without their creator. None of them. None of them. If you're looking for a revelation, this is the revelation, y'all, and it's not coming from me. 
It's not coming from me. Please do not look at me in this video. Block me out. Blot me out. Throw me to the side. And put God in your life first. And I'm telling you, the pieces will start falling together. I can't explain this. I know I sound like a hypocrite because I have been doing this for so long. And all of a sudden, well, where did that come from? Why are you doing this now, Nate? I think you're tricking me. I think you're playing a game. I don't think this is real. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And I'm not saying anybody said this. This is me speaking in my own mind. But let me say this. If I am playing a game right now, if I am lying to one soul on this planet, I will be punished in the worst way possible by the one that made me. And I swear by that. I am not lying to you. I am not a liar. I was a liar. I lied. I cheated. I steal. I stole. I did everything wrong in my addiction. I did bad things, yes. But I'm repenting from those things now. I'm turning from them. I want nothing. I want nothing to do with any of that. I just want to know my creator. I just want to know the one who made me. That's it. I don't want to know nothing else anymore. I just want to know what God will allow me to know. Even if God rejects me. I'm still going to fall on my knees and call out to God. I'm still going to do it. Even if God said, I never knew you. Just think if God said to you, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoer. I never knew you. Depart from me, you wicked person. You blasphemer. You, 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 you're corrupt. You wish death upon your brothers. You hope that people fall and fall in a pit of despair and darkness. How could you say that about people? How can we do that to each other? I could never live with myself if I seen one of my brothers or sisters fall into a pit. I would have to jump in. I would have to jump in with them. And I wouldn't want to. I'd be scared. I'd be terrified. But there's just something in me that says, you've got to go help them. Even uh, my brother that died, I've had dreams with him where I was trying to save him from hell, from certain things that he was involved with, that, that he was saying, because he would curse God and he hated God and he said things. And I tried telling him, I said, Earl, be aware of what you're saying, brother. I, I said, just watch what you're saying with your tongue. And there was times where he might have changed his mind a little bit, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I just hope God had mercy on him and has mercy on every single one of us. That, that's all that I can absolutely hope for. And I, I just can't. I just could never wish harm or disaster or some kind of plague on my people. I just couldn't do that. Now, if it had to happen for them to learn a lesson from their own wickedness, then so be it. Because that had to happen to me. Uh, wickedness had to be combated with wickedness with me. I had to be mocked and scorned and I had to be molested and killed in my dreams and I had to be I had to be broken down and I had to be mocked and I had to be beaten up and I had to be broken for me to understand that myself and I do not think I I don't know if this is gonna happen again I really don't know if this is gonna happen again everybody 
That's why I'm saying if you're if you're if something in you, if you're trembling right now from fear, that is the fear of God Almighty in you. That is not bad. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to tremble with fear in front of him because that means we're coming back to him. We're giving up all of these things that do us no good anymore. They're not going to do us any good at all. It's just going to destroy us. It's going to lead us into a pit. It's going to lead us into despair. It's going to lead us into bad things. It leads nowhere good. I'm telling you, I know this without a doubt in my soul now. I know it. I know it beyond knowing it. It's, it's a knowing. <laughs> it's a knowing. That's all I can say. It's a knowing. And I haven't been out in the sun for a while. This sun feels so good beaming upon me. I haven't been out in the sun for months. I don't have any vitamin D in my body. I'm sick. I'm sick right now. And God is restoring my body. God is restoring my health. I can slowly feel it coming, but it's going to take time. It's going to be hard. It's going to be very hard. But I'm so thankful right now. I'm so thankful that this is happening. Because I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> I couldn't do it anymore. I could not do it anymore. I couldn't hold on any longer. I couldn't try to hold up an image for the world anymore. I couldn't try to be something that I wasn't anymore. And I can't. And I'm done and I'm over it. And it's, it, it's past me. But it, there's still things there, but th this, is, this is different. This is something different. And I know this sounds absolutely crazy, but I had to go on a drug binge in order to get off of another drug. I know it sounds nuts, but I had to get back. I don't expect people to understand this, but I had to do heroin to get off of Suboxone. And then I had to get strung out on heroin again in order to throw away my works and to get rid of that toolbox of just horrible things. And I had to get on that and get strung out and do what I had to do with that in order to get away from the other thing. And I prayed, I was praying for this. I said, God, please, if you're there, get me out of this apartment please, I don't want to take these subs no more. I'm tired of being codependent on these. And they're still, I'm still going through withdrawal from them. I'm still withdrawing from them. I still feel weak. I still feel tired. I still feel very anxious and depressed. I'm, I, I don't feel right. I'm nowhere near in my right mind, but there is, there is another side that is overriding that right now. And I just really hope that it does not leave me. Because without it, I'm in despair. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I don't understand. I don't understand all of this. I don't understand why there are people that don't believe in these things. I don't understand why there are people that will not accept what is right in front of them and they know it but they just won't do it because it's not time or they just continue to reject, reject, reject. And I have no power over that. I'm not God. I'm, I'm only allowed to be what I am because God allows me to be a part of it because I've accepted it now. I didn't reject it again. If I would have rejected this again, it would have set me on a collision chorus even worse than now. Please don't do that to yourselves, y'all. Oh my God, please don't do that to yourselves. Please don't do that to yourselves. I'm, I'm actually begging that you don't do that to yourselves. Because I know what it's like. <laughs> I know all too well what it's like. I really do. And it is not a fun place. 
It is not a good place. It is not a healthy place. It is not an interesting place. It is not a, a peaceful place. It is not a joyful place. It, it's just, it's not good. It's just not good at all. And I know that this is all grace that I'm receiving. It's hard to explain, but it's grace happening. It's, it's, a ch it's another chance. And I cannot say no to that chance again. I cannot do it. Can't do it another time. There's no way. My body would fail me. My mind would fail me. I'd go literally insane and I wouldn't get out of that insanity. That's how I felt. And I don't know. I don't know where all this is going. I don't know where all this is going. I really don't. But there's still life to live. I still have time. I still have my body. But when the time comes, I just hope that I'm prepared. I really hope that I'm prepared for... If anything would happen, if I would get sick, if I would have an accident, if I would perish, I really hope that I'm ready for that time because there was a really long time there and I, I still am, if I'm being honest, that I was really terrified of death and I still am, if I'm being honest, but I shouldn't be though. That's what, that's what is, uh, that I'm not understanding. It's, it's kind of bothering me a lot because I don't understand why I'm so scared to die. I don't understand why I'm so scared to let the world fade or to, to say, okay, it's my time. And that's what it has to be, you know? It's, it, I, I don't know if it's from losing control or not having any control over my bodily functions that scares me. It's just a physical scared. I'm not scared uh, spiritually or, or uh, in the sense of being uh, guilty about things anymore. I'm just more scared about my physical stuff. I'm more scared to leave this fleshly vessel than anything. Because whether I know it or not, I am connected to this fleshly vessel for some reason right now. And I have to live with that. And I don't understand it all. I don't call myself a prophet. I don't call myself a teacher, a Buddha. I am simply the presence of what the Creator is allowing me to be. That's it. That's it. And I just want to know the creator's ways. I, I just want to know what, I, I want to know creative things. I want to know art, good soulful music. I want to know what it is to make projects that will move people, that will make people have a reaction that they never had in their life. That's what I want to do from this day on. I want people to respond with goodness and communal, a communal sense, a, a, a sense of brotherhood, a sense of togetherness again. I want there to be restoration. I want there to be something that we have never felt. I want there to be something that we didn't even ever expect that it could be. That's my vision. Well, that is the vision that, that God is, is placing there. It's not my vision. See, right when I say it's my vision, that's not right. If I say it's my vision, I'm giving myself the credit and I can't do that. 
and I have to be reminded of that. Because if I'm not reminded of that, I might forget. That's how quick I can go back into my pride and my ego and all the other things. I'm just a human being. I'm just a man. That's how easy it is to go back to those kinds of things that just destroy all over again. They just put me back in the same place. Put me right back in the same place. And I'm telling you, it's all over the place, y'all. We are in a world that needs to be cleansed. I, I can't even describe it to you right now. There's so many things around us that are bombarding us. And that, this is why I think people are staying away. This is why I think there's this exodus going on where people are staying in their homes and nobody's coming out and everybody's on their phones, everybody's on the internet because they're looking. They're looking for something. They're, they're, they're desperately looking for something and what they're looking for is God. They're looking for their own creator and they don't even know it. We don't even know it because I didn't know it. And I was wondering what I was looking for. And I was looking and I was looking and I was looking and I was looking and I was seeking and seeking and seeking and seeking through spirituality, through music, through art, through uh, scientists, through uh, people talking about astrology, through even Satanists, even through people uh, doing whatever else, any other thing. I was looking for it in every other thing except for God, except for Jesus Christ, except for my Creator. I wasn't looking at it in that at all. I just kept ignoring it and ignoring it and ignoring it and ignoring it. And it was just tugging at me and tugging at me and it was pulling at me and pulling at me and it would not let me go. And I really think there was people that were praying for me. I know there was. And there might have even been people that were saying about, I hope you, may, you might fall. I don't know that for sure, but if people did, that's okay. I'm not, I don't hate them. I'm not mad at them. I forgive them and I love them because I don't wish any harm on them at all. I don't want any of that to come to them at all. I just hope that we all clear our soul. That's all. And I hope we get something from this that we never got before. I hope this leads us in a direction where we never thought we would go. And as you're experiencing it, you know without a doubt that when you're saying it, it's real. That, that you believe it, that, that it's, you know that it's, it's not any earthly thing. It, it's not any spirituality thing. It's none of that stuff. It's the creator. <laughs> it's God. And there's, there's someone that said 2024 will be the year of truth. I believe that. I believe that myself. I believe that this year is going to be the year of truth. It's just been too long. It's been way too long. People have been hiding and people have been keeping secrets and people have been doing bad things and people have been running and people have been looking and seeking and doing all this stuff. And you're not going to find it. You're not going to find it. I don't want to say you're not going to find it on this earth necessarily, but you're not going to find it in a lot of these earthly things that are going on right now. You're not going to find it there. Because I didn't find it there. And I looked everywhere. <laughs> I looked in every little nook and cranny that a human could possibly conceive of. And nothing fulfills me or nothing keeps me content like this does and I just wanna keep in this. 
I want to stay in this. I don't want to leave this, but I know that I have to, I know that the earth is here and I know that there's going to be obstacles and I know there's going to be snares and I know there's going to be uh, temptation and I know there's going to be things around me and I know there's going to be people that are doing things and I know that I'm going to run into stuff and I know that it's going to be something. I know that already. So when it comes, it's like, Nate, you already knew it was going to come, brother. Whoever's watching, you already knew it was going to come, brother, sister. Whoever you are, you already knew it was going to come because as long as we're here, there's going to be something. There's going to be something going on. And, you know, as bad as I want to say, lately, I, I've, even though I talk about brotherhood and I talk about communion and I talk about some kind of togetherness and some kind of supping together and doing something like that and sitting with one another and just sharing a moment with something, there's a part of me that wants to get away from a lot of the world too. And I want others to come with me there. And I, and I want us to have that same kind of spirit, that same kind of uh, oneness, that same kind of trait where we know that chasing certain things will not do anything for us, where we know that no matter what we do, it'll never be enough. And, and, and we need to just focus on the things that we need and, and like healthy food, treating each other well, exercising, art, literature, creating things. But then we have to also have discernment with those things too, because if we don't have discernment, things can get real ugly real quick. And there was another video I watched that said something about right now the crowds have turned wicked and evil again. It, it, it's turned back into a very bad thing. We have got to look at ourselves, y'all. We got to look at number one. We have to. Without reflection and without conviction, nothing changes. The heart and mind of a man and spirit of a man will not change until they are convicted. Until they know something isn't right and they say this is wrong and I have to turn from this because I know it's not right. And I really believe something is really calling all of us, every single one of us. Even though I can't show it to people, I can't show it to you. But I gotta leave it at that, you know? I, there's just a point where you have to just leave it as it is. I got to leave it as it is and just move on and go to the next chapter, whatever that may be. I'm still a man. I'm still imperfect. But this is what's meant to be. Nothing else. But what I want to end this on, this will not happen until we accept it. This will not happen until we make a decision to go through with it. This will not happen until the individual says enough is enough. I will not live this way anymore. And... Something has got to change in my life. 
and I am giving my life to the thing that made me because I didn't make myself. And while leaving it there, keeping your mind set on that everywhere you go and just keeping it like that. And don't let anything influence you. Don't let anybody lie to you or tell you something else because that's what's going to be coming at us. Because a lot of us have lost our way. And because I know, because I lost my way many times. Many, 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 many times and I'm still capable of it. And that's what scares and terrifies me. Is that I will lose my way again. I just hope we all hear the calling. And every person has their own individual calling. It's not going to be the same, but yet it's all coming into one. It's all coming into, the paradox is coming into itself. The black and the white circle that I've been drawing, and, and, and I have a, a drawing that I draw with a cross, the circle of black and white, and a blood drop coming at the bottom of it. A drop symbolizing water, blood, sweat, tears, symbolizing liquid water, the fluids of life. And I still have uh, things to draw and put out, but see, I, cu I, di I couldn't make up my mind for a while. So whatever's going to come, it's going to come, you know. I just got to let it come how it comes. You know, I, I just pray that more of you become artists for God and creators for God and creatives for God and that you write literature and you, you, you have a cause in this life, that you find some kind of craft where you belong. That, that is my prayer to every single person, whoever's on here. I really hope you find where you're needed, but listen, it's not always gonna be where you think you belong. It doesn't happen like that, I know. I know all too well it doesn't happen like that. So anyway, y'all, I leave you with peace in the chaos. I leave you with focusing on the, the one that made you even when everything around you is telling you something different and is bombarding your mind, is trying to influence you to do something else. I pray that you stay in that place. I pray that we all stay in that place together. Praise God. Glory to Jesus Christ. I am nothing without the creator. Later, y'all.